What's up, people? This is Bunjo, and it's Saturday. Wake up, uh, clean your dicks, put a gram in the microwave, and snort it in one shot. Woo! Let's get this party started. Now, this is another drug dealing story. And look it, I'm out here in the beautiful island of Chiovo. As you can see, it looks like it's raining over in Ashota, but it's sunny over here in Oak Krug. Bang, bang. Yeah, it's not, it's like a mild day here today in Chiovo. So a winter jacket, well not really winter jacket, like a, a windbreaker kind of day. And uh, I'm going for a nice little walk. Don't forget to buy a This Is Bunjo t-shirt at teespring.com slash this is Bunjo. And, or you can donate to my uh, PayPal account, which is thewickman at icloud.com. Either way, it'd be much appreciated. Or just press subscribe, share and the bell button, why not? Thanks, uh, yeah, but uh, this, this story is going to be about uh, this customer I used to have named Lee. Uh, he used to be a CIBC financial advisor for like millionaire. He was a big deal at the bank, right? And uh, basically this guy used to buy, buy uh, coke off me and build snowmans and sniff them like he's Joe Biden and they're somebody's kids, you know? And uh, he's a pretty funny guy. He used to... Uh, he used to be like a nerdy kind of guy, uh, but he had like a really good job, like a financial advisor taking care of millionaires' accounts. And this guy's just uh, sniffing gram rocks, like they're going out of style, you know what I mean? Yeah, this guy, yeah, this guy was uh, one of the guys that would be like, uh, his wife would give him an allowance, uh, what he could spend and what he couldn't spend. So he'd have like this certain allowance, but he'd drive all the way from uh, London, Ontario to Hamilton, Ontario. So that's like a, a good hour and a half drive. And it's just to get high, you know, he'd always say this, I'm just coming over, picking up and leaving. But every time he came over, he'd end up staying the whole night and spending all his money. Uh, and by the end of the night, he'd be digging through his ashtray. And uh, like in his car, his ashtray. And uh, getting together like four dollars. Like, what can I get with this? I'm like, dude, with four bucks, you can sniff the bag. I'm like, I try to tell him, I'm like, dude, don't do this to yourself, man. It's it's embarrassing, you know. You're supposed to be a well-educated man, and here you are scrambling for change. You know what I mean? It's, it's uh, pretty crazy. Self, it's really embarrassing for a guy. But uh, Lily, one time he's uh we had a microphone set up because we thought we'd build a studio and just screw around and rap and stuff right look how beautiful it is and uh <laughs> lily would rap like he's me he'd be like rapping like he's living my life talking about like it was crazy it's pretty weird He was like a fangirl before i even had fans <laughs> and uh so he made this rap song about my whole life it was pretty weird i forget how it goes but it's pretty weird, you know what I mean? Anybody who raps like they're living somebody else's life is weird. And um, so, uh, like I said, by the end of the night, he'd be scrambling, looking for change, and uh, licking the table, licking the cart, asking if he could scrape my scale off. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude, that's gonna cost you another 10 bucks to scrape the scale, because I know you'll get another uh, half, half gram of cheese off that. And uh, that's called the discount scale. And um, so basically, every night he'd come down, he'd drive an hour and a half, and he has to work the next day. He comes on a, a work day, and he's like, yo. I'm like, it's like two o'clock in the morning, bro. I'm like, you gotta go home, don't you? Like, um, I'm like, what are you gonna do? And he's like, uh, he's like, oh, I was just thinking about catching a couple hours here. I'm like, no way. I'm like, you're going to have to sleep in the, you're going to have to sleep in a hotel or you're not sleeping at my house. So the dude sleeps out front of my house in, in his car. And my mom at this time, it was like, we had a, we had a uh, triplex. So we, so we all had our own apartment. So we all owned a, house, a, a huge house with like th three different apartments. And I lived in the basement one. And uh, I mean, it's not the most press, but Hey, it was still a huge house. And um, so this guy, my mom comes home from work at 2.30 in the morning. She worked at a bar. 
because she owned a bar. And he's, she's like, some guy or some cop is outside sleeping in his car and he's all sketchy, like pretending that he's sleeping, but he's peeking out his window. I'm like, that's Lee. She's like, you know that guy? I'm like, yeah, he's from London. He's, he's a customer. And she's like, why wouldn't you just let him sleep in the house? That's me. And I'm like, he ain't my friend. He's a customer, man. Can't confuse them. And uh, so my mom's like, that's weird. And she was sketched out. So I had to go there and tell Lee to go sleep around the corner. You know what I mean? And uh, it was pretty weird. Weird stuff like that always happens with Lee. Lee. And uh, yeah, this is Chiova. This is like the pass. The path in front of my house along the beach, along the coast. This is where I live. Um, I just gave you guys a little quick story about Lee, but I'm gonna show you, I just got this new GoPro camera. So I just wanna show you guys what it looks like on a better stabilized camera. It looks beautiful, huh? And this is the path we go through every morning. We go for hikes. Uh, I don't know, it looks beautiful, look at this. So nice. And yeah, I got so many other drug dealing stories like that. I love, I love talking about my past because it helps you uh, not only deal about things that you feel bad for that you've done in the past, but it makes you, uh, it helps teach others not to do these things. And it's a good little lesson, you know, I mean, Drug dealing helped me out a lot. It got me a lot, God let me to do a lot of things that I would never have done without it. Um, I still went to school and university and all that. And I, but I, I ended up selling drugs and being a gang gang member. And now I'm out here. I changed my life so many times. I lived like 15 different lives, you know? And it's uh, a lot of people can't say that. So I, if, if you ask me, if I, would I take any of those mistakes I made back or any of my experiences? Probably not, no, because it helped me be who I am today. And, it, and it's like, who else can say they've done all that and lived through it and got to quit? Like usually if you get into that business with these guys, you try to quit, they'll kill you. But me, I got lucky where I had some outs and uh, sure, I got death threats and I had to pay money to get out of it and they took my truck but I mean that's a little price to pay than to pay with your life right so I mean I'm not trying to send a message to kids or the youth or anybody for that matter about saying that selling drugs or drugs are good I'm just saying it's a way to get you out of a, uh, a broken place I guess or uh, when you're stuck in life and you need something, it'll make it a little more exciting, that's all. And drugs are only bad because people abuse them. Let's just get that out of the way. But it's hard not to abuse them because it feels so good, you know? To shoot yourself with a half gram in the face. Throw some snowballs at your buddy's face. You know what I mean? Or, yeah, blow some up a girl's butt. But it feels good, you know what I mean? It's so good. But, uh, I don't know. I'm out here. This is Bonjo. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and share. Now I'm all alone in Chiovo again. Mickey's gone back to Argentina. And I'm here alone again. But I'm not like uh, all you humans. I got less compassion for the rest of you boys. Yeah. Gang, gang, baby. Shout out to Muff Saipo. Uh... Shout out to all these guys that uh, we keep in contact with and uh, our little YouTuber group, Indian Terriers, Stupid Tourists, Balkan Nomad, JC Max, Tim K, Wonder Boy Jeremy, Harold Balder, all these guys. They're good guys, man. And Michele Ponte, all these guys. Um, thanks. Now this Lee guy would get really weird when he's on call and asking me about all my relationships and how many girls and try to get real deep intimate details about me and my girls that I've been with because he's a one pussy type of man and he's never experienced outside the box he got married for the first girl that touched him like oh I love you you know what I mean and uh so he'd always get weird and you know 
you ever been around or done uh, cocaine, it really has this uh, moment where you're like just thinking about sex, 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 sex. But most, like you text all the girls you know, um, or you get sexual text escorts. Who knows what you do, right? Get really weird on it. And that's like during just before the come down or the come down. But usually most people. They just want to talk about sex or want to talk sexual on it. But when it comes down to doing it, their dick's limper than a than a wet noodle. You know what I mean? And it's like, it's the truth. But it's like, it has like this, this uh, aphrodisiac in cocaine that's like, it just makes you want to have sex with anything. That's why you hear about all these gay drug-fueled orgies in uh, the Vatican. It's because... These guys, when they do drugs, they let, let out their sexual frustrations and blame it on the drug. Oh man, I just sucked a dick for a half a gram. You know what I mean? Because of the drug, they blame it because they had a drug problem. No, that might have just been deep inside you and you just use drugs as an excuse. In my eyes, in my eyes. You know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, that's it. There's a little story about Lily. Lee McLeod, the financial advisor, CIBC London. Look him up. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. Look at this. It's a beautiful path, though. Thank you, guys, for watching. And I'll show you a little bit more of this path.